Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to look at deploying multiple availability zones in VCF. This is useful for environments that require a site for DR or failover, although those aren't the only reasons that you can actually deploy the solution. What we're going to do is create a second availability zone for the managing domain in this demo, and that's essentially stretching the cluster and then all of the VCF automation that happens alongside with it. The aim is that when the primary DC loses connectivity, or goes down for whatever reason, the management appliances fail over to the second availability zone. There are some underlying network requirements and other requirements that need to be met in order for this solution to work. And a link to those requirements are in this video's description. The other thing I wanted to cover off quickly um, is that I'll be using multi-NIC hosts in this demo. What that means is I'll be using four physical NICs as opposed to two physical NICs. So there are some added complexities from doing this. Uh, you do need to create a separate JSON or a, an updated JSON that references these four NICs. If you don't, when you try to stretch the cluster, you end up with a NIC configuration error during the workflow. I've provided a couple of JSONs as examples in the this video's description. Anyways, let's move on with the slide deck and then we'll move on to actually doing the work. So this is just a quick overview of the architecture that we're going for. Four hosts on either side and we're stretching across the two of them and that includes your vSAN, vMotion, uh, management, host overlay, everything else that you actually require for VCF to operate to be functioning between both sites. In the next slide, we'll look at the actual steps as an overview of what we need to do to accomplish this. So let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so here we have what we need to do. So first we're gonna create or expand network pools. In this case, I'm creating new network pools as I'll be using different vSAN and vMotion networks in the destination. We'll commission the multi-NIC hosts. Uh, in this example or in this demo, I'll be using JSON files to do that. Then we'll populate a JSON file that we require for stretching. We'll validate that config in the JSON and then we'll finally stretch the cluster. Okay, so now that we've covered all that off, let's move on to the actual work, the fun stuff. Okay, let's get started. So now log into STDC Manager as the first step. And then what we wanna do is go into Network Settings. And here's where you've got your two options as mentioned in the slide deck. You can either create a brand new network pool to match the destination, or you can extend an existing one. What we're gonna do here is we're going to create a new one. And let's give it a name. Let's enable vSAN. So what happens here is if you just take quick notice, this catches some people out. VMotion starts off here, but the moment you check vSAN, it goes moves over to the right and then vSAN takes that spot. So just make sure you get the VLANs right the right time around, the first time around. So now let's put in the VLAN ID, put in the requirements for your environment. Okay. And let's put in the pool that we want to use. So I'm going to go with 0 up 10 to 172.50. And let's add that in. And then let's do the same for vMotion. Put in the VLAN ID. I'll give it the details. And let's put in the default gateway. And once again, let's create that pool. I'm just matching these on either side. It doesn't have to match on your in your environment if you've got different requirements. And hit add and let's save that. Cool. And that's network pool created. So that now means we can commission the hosts using the new network pool that we've just created or the one that you've extended, either or works. And I'll show you how to do that in the JSON in the next part. Okay, so let's now open the JSON file that is in the description. It's called bulk commission hosts and it should look like this. Now what we can see is here, we've got one, two, three, four hosts that we're trying to commission. And as you see in all of them, they've got a root username and password, the storage type, what management pool or network pool they're going to be associated with. And then we're not gonna be using any VVOL storage. So if we populate this JSON to suit our environment, that will be the first step. And then we can then commission hosts. So let's move on to commissioning the hosts. Go into hosts, commission. These are the prerequisites required to be able to successfully commission your hosts. Uh, I won't go through all of them, but just make sure you do and that you can check all those boxes. So I'll select all and hit proceed. 
I'm going to import because I'm using a JSON file. And here I'll go with bulk commission, upload, and now I'll select and validate all of them. This process can take a bit of time depending on your environment. So let's let that finish and it should come back validated. Okay, so once that fully validates, you should have a green banner. Everything should be good. And then you can hit next and commission. So this will go through the process of onboarding the hosts and do everything that it needs to do in order to get them into the inventory properly. There are a bunch of subtasks that need to be completed as well. If you want to, you can follow through or just wait for the parent task to complete. So let's wait for that to finish. Depending on your environment, this may or may not take a bit of time and depending on how many hosts you've got as well. Okay, now we can see that the host commissioning process has completed. If you actually click into here, you can sort of go through all the subtasks if you choose to. But we know that it's been successful and we can now get the commissioned hosts IDs. There are a couple of ways to do this and we need these IDs so we can populate the JSON properly. And at least that way we can validate the config and do the deployment and stretch the cluster. So let's move on to obtaining those host IDs and populating the JSON file according to the environment and then we'll validate it and we'll stretch the cluster. Okay, let's open up Postman so we can start some of the API work. Okay, so here is the first thing we need to do. We need to get a bearer token in order to be able to utilize the SDDC Manager's API. So in order to do so, hit this endpoint here and you can, you can actually get the commands directly from the VCF API reference guide online. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hit send. Here's my bearer token. So I'll copy that. And I'll just put it into a notepad document for use throughout this video. Okay, cool. Okay, now using that bearer token, we're gonna create a new request. So grab that token and then we want to come over to a new tab of Postman and we're gonna hit this endpoint and in authorization, change it to bearer token and copy in your token. So we should have what looks to be like a request like this. So then if we hit send, we'll be able to get all of the hosts that are unassigned usable status. And if we want to make it a little easier, easier on ourselves, so here you can see ID, you can actually just search for ID and find it through the document. So if we just type ID, and then you'll see, you should see a couple of different IDs. One will be a network pool ID, and then you'll have a host ID. You want the host IDs. So this is one way to get the host IDs. Another way you can actually do this, which is sometimes a little easier when you don't have too many hosts, is you can actually just come into here, click on the host, and then if you have a look in the URL, you've got the host ID there. So note all of these down in a notepad document or however it is you want to note them down and then we'll populate the JSON using these details. All right, so now I'm gonna open up the JSON file. This is linked in the description of this video. Um, you'll be able to just grab this and modify it as required for your environment. Note, let's go through it quickly first. So we can see host details. We can see that we're mapping multiple NICs. We can see here we've got two different VDSs. And then if we scroll all the way down, We've also got the vSAN witness details. This needs to be deployed prior to actually deploying the stretch cr cluster, otherwise it will fail. Okay, so now grab all the IDs that we just picked up and populate the ID fields in each of the hosts. And then you'll need to use a license that works for you. Um, and then we'll move on. Okay, now once you've finished filling out that JSON file, we'll need to jump back into Postman. And what we wanna do in Postman is actually validate the configs. What we'll need to do is get the cluster ID so you can actually enter it in here. So there are a couple of ways again to do this. You can do this via API, CLI on the SDDC manager itself, any curl request essentially, or even just use the UI, which is probably the simplest. So let's use the UI to do that. If we jump into workload domains, click on the management workload domain, which is the one we're using here. So it's up to you, whichever cluster it is you're trying to expand. And then we go into clusters and we'll click on clusters. And then you can see here, we've got a couple of UUIDs. The first one is the domains, and then you've got the clusters ID here. So let's grab that, copy that out, and then we'll put it into the postman request, which is already there, but I'm just doing it for this video. And then what we wanna do is 
get the JSON file that we actually modified earlier and put it all in the body. Ensure you've got JSON selected and then you're using your bearer token again, so your authorization token. And let's hit send on that request and we should either get a pass or a fail or a success or a failure. Cool. And now we can see that it has validated against the config and it is good to be stretched and that config is valid. Okay, so what we need to do now is to actually apply this configuration so it starts the stretching process. So first things first, let's change the post to a patch and we have to change the endpoint that we're actually trying to hit. So we have to go to V1 clusters and you've just got to put the cluster ID on the end and get rid of validations so that you know this is in fact going to be applying the config. The next thing we need to do is we need to come into the body and we've also got to remove this line here, otherwise it will fail. And we'll just have to remove the last indentation. And then what we need to do after that is just hit send and that should, that should start the stretching process. Okay, here we go. There you go, now it says it's in progress. If you actually open up the UI, you should be able to see that as a task. There you go and that should kick off. So what I'll do is I'll actually provide you the actual validation JSON as well as the one that you As you can see, the stretching process has begun. This can actually take quite a bit of time. So go away, have a coffee, come back after an hour or so and just intermittently check on it and let's wait for it to complete. Excellent, so the task is now complete, which means we should have a stretch cluster now. There you go, you have it there, it's successful. So if we go into workload domains, we can then click into the management domain, which is the one that we we're working with. Then we'll go to clusters. I'll just close this to give us some more room. Open up the cluster, click on hosts. And here we can see the additional hosts. We can see they're in their own management pool or in their own IP pool, I should say. If we go into vCenter, we can see there are four additional new hosts and you can see that they've all got four physical NICs attached. And that was the aim of the modified JSON. And ordinarily what you would do now is you'd more than likely test the failure scenario. So you would shut down these four hosts or shut down the switch ports attached to these hosts to bring them offline. And then ensure that all your management appliances and everything that was running in AZ1 ran in AZ2. And that would essentially tell you that everything's failed over to your secondary fault domain. and that would be perfect, that's what you're after. But we won't do that in this video. And that concludes this video. Hopefully you got everything you wanted from this. Thank you.